Hi everyone, thanks for the invitation. So I am Nicolas Fab, postdoc at Center of New Technology in the group of Konad Banaszek. And today I'm going to discuss and present uh, the work that I have done during my PhD thesis at Paris University at Material and Quantum Phenomena Laboratory. And uh, it's about uh, quantum information in time frequency continuous variable. I'm going to start by a short introduction in quantum information and especially how we can encode information by using either discrete or continuous variable with a, a photonic field. So um, we can encode information in, in quantum mechanics by using discrete variable so that you are leading to describe a state uh, living in a finite dimensional Hubble space. The easier example is uh, the two dimensional Hubble space case. And in that case, you can define a qubit, which is a set of two orthogonal states. In a very nutshell, every uh, quantum advantage, quantum speed up that is, is providing in quantum computation is thanks to these two main fundamental properties. Uh, superposition is the fact that you can uh, create a super coherent linear superposition of a qubit. And then you have the entanglement property, which is the fact that a wave function is sometimes cannot be factorized into uh, individual uh, subsystem. To define a qubit, it's not an, only a two orthogonal state. You must, in addition, define the noise model uh, because you, you have to know if uh, the qubit is uh, the two orthogonal state are physical. Then you define what it is the Volterians uh, very rapidly. It is the threshold from which you are able to correct errors. And then for a quantum computation perspective, you define the universal set of gate, which is the, um, a set which uh, inside in this set, uh, when you are performing a product of such a, uh, a gate inside this set, you can uh, approximate any uh, unitary matrix with a finite precision. Then you can define a QDIT, and the QDIT is a set of d orthogonal state this time and have different properties on the qubit. What I am going, well, first, just a few examples about uh, discrete variable. Discrete variable correspond, for instance, to the mode of single photons. A qubit can be encoded by using what it is called dual ray encoding, and it is the presence or the absence of single photon into two spatial paths or you can use the polarization of single photon to encode uh, a qubit. A qubit is, for instance, the time energy bin of single photon. You are going to define different type bin uh, at the uh, detector stage, and you can define a qubit, uh, a qubit. And then uh, orbital angular momentum of light can be also used to define uh, a qubit. And here on this uh, image, uh, you have different transversal profile of uh, of the single photon, uh, where on each of these picture it corresponds to different helicities. Uh, despite the fact that modes are a common cloth characteristic of both single photon and the classical field, um, it's not a classical encoding because you are in the single photon space, because you are going to use the, at some point of your uh, quantum task, the particular aspect of the field. In addition, uh, especially uh, for quantum communication protocol, you are going to use very uh, explicitly quantum correlations such as non-locality or discord and which do not have any counterpart uh, in a classical setting. In this talk, I'm going to be mostly interested by uh, QDIT, but when D is going to infinite. Uh, so I'm not discretizing the modes. Uh, and then you can uh, use the un infinite dimensional evil space of degree of freedom of single photons. So this is this limit, which is a sketch here. And uh, what I am going to explain is that this uh, Q, which, uh, at, which is, at, which is a, a real quantity, is a really a quantum continuous variable because you have a, a non varying non-commutative algebra of operators, which apply on this state. I'm going to be more precise later, just the first uh, explanation. 
example of such uh, QDID when D is going to infinite is the transversal position momentum continuous variable and uh, also the time frequency variable of single photon. The problem, which is not, but uh, generally in quantum optics, when people are thinking about continuous variable, they are not thinking about uh, the mode of single photon. They are thinking about quadrature position momentum variable. And just to uh, not create confusion, I'm just going to explain what are they. Um, quadrature position momentum variable appear when you quantize the electromagnetic field into a single mode or multi-mode. Here the single mode is uh, the frequency omega. And Q and P, which are a uh, scalar in, um, in the classical limit when the number of photons is going to infinite or when H bar is going to zero, becomes operators in, uh, in the quantum regime. And Q and P, which are operators, are quantity which admits as uh, eigenspectra Q and P, which are quadrature position and momentum variable. And the reason why Q and P are quantum continuous variable is that because you have this, as I said, this underlying uh, algebra of operators which do not commute. Q and P, well, for me at least it's a little abstract, but uh, they are really particle number sensitive variable, okay? And one way to see that is that by making the uh, linear superposition of Q and P to define creation or uh, annihilation here operators. And thanks to creation operators, you can uh, define uh, n fog state, which corresponds to n excitation of the electromagnetic field, uh, which we call uh, photons in quantum optics. Um, the point is that uh, you can use such continuous variable to encode information. You encode the information into the particle number distribution of the quantum field. And it is very different from what uh, I will explain is to encode the information into the mode distribution of single photon, the number being fixed. So I'm playing with uh, this analogy between one single photon into many modes and uh, many photon in one mode. It is just a mathematical analogy. And of course, physically, it's completely different. Um, as I have uh, shown some distribution, uh, some examples, sorry, of a single photon uh, of discrete variable and discrete and single photon. Uh, well, in continuous variable to uh, have a very uh, efficient uh, representation of the state, you can use the Wigner distribution. So here the Wigner distribution is a, in one-to-one -one correspondent with the density matrix or the wave function. And the reason why we use such a distribution, it is because it is directly measurable in experiments. So a few examples of such Wigner distributions. Here you have the Wigner distribution of the vacuum state, which is a Gaussian center at uh, zero at the origins of phase space, where here X and P are quadrature position momentum variable. Here you have the squeeze vacuum state, which is um, a Gaussian, but uh, which is uh, more elongated along the P direction than the X direction, for instance. Here you have the particle number distribution of the single photon state. And here you have the cat state, which is uh, a coherent linear superposition of two current state. And you can see that it is a, indeed a coherent superposition because you have orthogonally to these uh, two potatoes, uh, an interference pattern. Here, well, the information again is encoded into the particle number distribution. Uh, and uh, what you are, what, what people are, uh, are used to, to encode information generally is current state, squeeze state, a uh, cat state can be used to encode a qubit into continuous variable. And what I am going to explain now is also we can use a GKP state. So even if you are in continuous variable, you must define a qubit uh, to, uh, because they are necessary for quantum error correction. You cannot do quantum error correction if you are in an infinite uh, dimensional bus space. One way to define a qubit is uh, was proposed by Gottsman, Kitev, and Preskill uh, in 2001. And it consists of the sum of squeeze state uh, and these two orthogonal state here are slightly shifted from uh, an amount of square root of pi. 
they are designed to be robust against quadrature shift by the redundancy of information that you have. But it appears also that they are also robust against photon losses. 20 years after, uh, they are, uh, well, at least proof of principle of uh, the uh, experimental implementation of such a GKP state in two platforms, superconducting and trap ion platform. What this talk is about, after this uh, kind of long introduction, but I think necessary to uh, really exhibit the, the many ways that uh, people have to encode uh, uh, quantum information, is, well, I'm going to discuss about time frequency continuous variable of single photon, one or two, because, well, two photon states are more useful. And I'm going really to think about smart uh, engineering of the continuous variable distribution of the photon pair. And because the single photon or two photon states uh, have continuous variable distribution, I'm going to perform the analogy with the quadrature position momentum variable, which is, as I say, completely different because it is sensitive to the particular number distribution, the mode being fixed. Okay, but there are some mathematical analogies that I want to, to stress out. For quantum communication purposes, uh, a photon pair is enough uh, for application, but for quantum computation, metrology and simulation, of course, a pair is not enough and the, the reason are multiple. I uh, can discuss that if you want, but the idea is first to think about uh, a really, uh, how we can engineer a photon pair uh, for some application and then uh, once this, uh, this uh, engineering is done, uh, we will think later about uh, the number of photon scaling, which is required for many applications. Uh, and but uh, this is a little of dark humor that I have here. But you have to understand that it is very understand. It is very difficult to uh, entangle single photons, and it is it is the uh, the limitation for now of the photonic platform for quantum information purposes. So my outline is this. I'm going to start by discussing continuous variable formalism of single photons and how we can encode a qubit into the continuous variable of single photon, uh, which is uh, what I am going to call time frequency GKP state. And then in the last part, I'm going to discuss uh, a, a possible application of uh, using a, a photon pair to simulate statistics of uh, quantum particles such as uh, anions or fermions with bosonic particle. So just a few words about uh, the formalism of single photon. Uh, a single photon at frequency omega is described by a creation operator at some mode A, because you have to define the existence of uh, the particles. So A is uh, some special mode and these uh, operators uh, which apply on the vacuum state and give the single photon state at frequency omega. The, um, the very important commutation, bosonic commutation re relation, which in going to retain the quantum algebra of the frequency uh, degree of freedom is the following. I'm going to just uh, after how we can really apply this uh, bosonic commutation relation to really exhibit uh, quantum algebra of uh, displacement operator in particular. A single photon wave function can be described by this uh, infinite uh, sum uh, of, uh, of creation operator, where the weight of the superposition is a complex quantity and is the amplitude spectrum of the source. The integral here, well, if you are, uh, we, I take the full uh, real axis uh, the need uh, to define a negative frequency for single photon is uh, quite an issue, uh, but I will consider very uh, peaked distribution far away the origin, such as it's not a, a, a real problem. The uh, conjugated variable of the frequency is the time of high level variable of the single photon on a detector, uh, and you can define such a variable uh, by uh, performing uh, the Fourier transform of the uh, creation here, of the annihilation layer or the uh, creation operator. 
the time frequency displacement operators at the single photon level can be uh, written like this. So uh, the frequency displacement operators is going to shift a single photon at frequency omega to a small amount of uh, delta, and it can be directly written uh, thanks to creation and uh, operation and annihilation uh, bosonic operators. And uh, the frequency displacement operators you can also apply on a uh, on single photon at time of arrival t, and it's going to give a phase, as it is usual when you are considering uh, two uh, canonically conjugated variable phase or shift. The time displacement operator uh, can be also defined in the same spirit. So I, I, I am arriving to this very important commutation, non commutation relation, uh, which is called the Weyl algebra is that the uh, time and frequency displacement operators do not commute uh, because you have this phase and it is directly because you have uh, this, uh, non, this non commutation of bosonic operators which came uh, from this, okay? So that's time and frequency variable of uh, different excitation of the electromagnetic field, one, two, three, uh, are very different than the time frequency variable of the classical field because uh, you have uh, an underlying uh, non-commutation of, uh, of operators. So here I'm going to compare the two algebra of uh, the quadrature position momentum continuous variable uh, of uh, which is traditionally written in quantum optics textbook. Uh, well, you can define uh, the, the displacement operator in, in, in momentum, in position, uh, and you also, this uh, quadrature position momentum displacement operators do not commute. And the reason is that because you have uh, a non commutative algebra of operators. And here, in my case, it will be exactly the same thing, uh, but uh, for different reasons, uh, you have also uh, the time and frequency displacement operators of single photon at mod A, which aren't going to, which do not commute because you have uh, this um, bosonic uh, commutation relation. So I'm leading, and this is why I have this analogy about uh, one photon into many modes and uh, many photon into one mode. It's come directly from the comparison between these two algebra. Then once you have defined displacement operators, you can actually define what it is called the chronocyclic Wigner distribution, which is in one-to-one -one correspondence to the density matrix uh, of a single photon state. Uh, and well, the chronocyclic Wigner distribution can be interpreted as the average value of the displaced parity operators. And uh, well, it has exactly the same mathematical properties and structure than the quadrature position momentum Wigner distribution, but the physical interpretation is completely different. It was, such a distribution was first uh, used in this article in 2013 um, by Benjamin Brecht and Christine Siberon. But then in our article, we have defined rigorously uh, why this distribution is actually a quantum one. Uh, because again, I guess, uh, uh, going to this uh, uh, algebra of displacement operation. So just to recap, because there are many Wigner distribution uh, in the market. Um, first, you have this Wigner distribution. As I say, it is a Wigner distribution, which is going to be sensitive to the particle number distribution of the field, the mode being fixed. Then you have the Wigner dis Wigner-Ville distribution. The Wigner-Ville distribution, uh, is an alternative representation of an, electric, an electrical field which carry both the phase and the amplitude, but it is a representation which is useful for only for an, an intense laser field. Then you have this chronocyclic Wigner distribution, so a lot of them, which have exactly the same structure if you want. It is a Fourier transform of the, auto, of the uh, uh, correlation function, uh, but this representation is only useful when you are considering the mode of single photon. Uh, then also you have a functional Wigner distribution which can combine both the particle number distribution and the mode of single photon. 
uh, they differ all this distribution by their physical interpretation, especially the negativity. For this one, the negativity is interpreted as uh, some quantum future, while here the negativity doesn't mean uh, nothing, as here, by the way. But fundamentally, they are completely different by, uh, they differ by the dynamics, because the dynamics is going to, uh, to make intervene directly the non competitivity of operators, which appear in that case and in that case, but not here in the classical case. I'm going to be mostly interested not by a one single photon, but by a photon pair. A photon pair is described by, is, uh, sorry, produced by spontaneous parametric time conversion, for instance, by uh, a classical pump and it's going to generate by and it's going to generate by nonlinearity, uh, Nigler and the sign of photon. The so wave function of the photon pair can be uh, described by uh, by this expression, and the coefficient of the expression here is a joint spectral amplitude, and carry both the amplitude and the phase uh, information about the signal and the idler. The square value, the absolute square value of the joint spectral amplitude is called the joint spectral intensity. And it is the probability of, measure, of measuring a photon at a frequency omega s and another photon at omega i. The joint spectral intensity is delimited by the, the full range. It's delimited by two physical processes, energy conservation and momentum conservation. Uh, the energy conservation is going to give a width of the joint spectral intensity along the omega plus axis, which is at 45 degrees here, and the momentum conservation, which is described by F minus function, and is going to give uh, a frequency width along the uh, omega minus direction, which is at 135 uh, degrees. The full tomography of uh, wave function is, uh, is something hard to do. Um, what we can do experimentally is to measure the joint spectral intensity, but uh, measuring joint temporal intensity um, or some cross marginal is something hard to do, especially because we are dealing with femtosecond single photon. Uh, but uh, we, we, we want some information about uh, not only the amplitude, but only if we want some information about the phase. And one way to extract some information uh, without doing the full tomography is by using the angu mandel experiment. The angu mandel experiment is the following. You are going to start by uh, an entangled photon pair, or not, by the way. And one of the uh, single photon is going to be delayed by a small amount of tau, OK? They are, these single photons are going to cross a bin splitter. And then after the bin splitter, you have four possible events. The events which are called punching events, uh, where the uh, two photons are going to coalesce into one single path. Uh, and uh, you are going to measure single count. And then you have coincidence events uh, where the photons are split. If tau, the time delay is set to zero, then the two single photons are fully, here in this case, fully indistinguishable. And you can directly measure this indistinguishability uh, by measuring the coincidence probability. Uh, when tau is set to zero, the coincidence probability is zero. And the reason is that uh, you have a destructive interference effect between these two events when tau is equal to zero, owing to the phase uh, of the uh, bin splitter. And you are going only to measure single count, uh, which corresponds here to bunching effect. And as soon as you are going to change the time delay between the single photon, uh, the, pho the two single photon becomes more and more distinguishable. You have a whole range of distinguishability uh, because you are in continuous variable. And then you are going to uh, move along this curve. And when you, are, when you arrive at one out of half, um, then the two single photons here are fully uh, distinguishable. This red curve I'm going to, to discuss uh, 
after in the last part of my talk. In 2013, uh, my former group has generalized this Angu Mandel experiment uh, just by adding not only a time shift, but also a frequency shift. In that case, when you are measuring the coincidence probability, uh, which is now a function of tau and mu, the time and frequency shift, uh, it is actually a cut of the chronic cyclic linear distribution of the phase matching function. So I remind that the phase matching function is uh, the one which is related to the momentum conservation of the spontaneous parametric time conversion process. So you do not measure the energy conservation part, which is normal because we, with one measurement, you cannot make the full tomography of the state, but at least you point out that you can have uh, a lot of information about um, the amplitude and the phase of some process. Uh, and here, the coincidence probability, which is uh, quite used, uh, is actually only a cut of the Wigner distribution at mu equals zero. In this uh, part, now I'm going to discuss about how to encode a qubit into the continuous variable single photon. Uh, the idea, so the ideal frequency time GKP state, GKP for Gottsman, Kitev, and Preskill state uh, are defined as, uh, as follows. Um, we are defining uh, two, two logical state as, the, as two microcomb. So a microcomb is uh, a single photon which, which can populate all of its frequency peaks, okay? And uh, the two orthogonal states are slightly shifted from an amount of two omega bar. Then, since it is a comb in frequency, it is also a comb in time, but uh, you have this, uh, this uh, alternance of phases here. So, this state is exactly the same as here, but here it is written in time, and in time it is actually the coherent linear superposition of the corresponding states in the temporal domain. The state that I have presented is of course not physical because uh, it possesses uh, an infinite large envelope and also each peak, each peak sorry, is infinitely thin. Uh, to uh, build uh, a physical frequency time GKB state, the, the way is first by applying what I call a time noise. A time noise is uh, you apply on this ideal frequency GKB state a time displacement operation multiplied by a Gaussian distribution. And this uh, operation is going to give a width of the envelope. Then uh, if you want to create a frequency width for each of the peaks, the way is as here to, to apply a frequency, uh, operation, uh, frequency displacement operation multiplied by a Gaussian distribution um, with a different width and it's going to give an intrinsic width of each piece. And what it is uh, actually tricky is that because the uh, quadrature position displacement operation are analogous uh, mathematically to the one of the time frequency displacement operation, what you can do is to compare here the microcomb, okay? So a single photon which can populate in mini frequency mode and the traditional quadrature position momentum GKP state where here it is the, uh, in the axis, the uh, quadrature position variable. Uh, and here it is a sum of squeeze state. So it is very different than this, but what you can do uh, as analogy is to compare the width of the squeezing here with the bound width of single photo because you have this common uh, non-commutative algebra. And of course this, uh, this uh, analogy holds only because here you are in single photon subspace. You are not going to compare uh, mathematically uh, a classical comb, okay, uh, which, uh, which is represented exactly like this with a sum of squeeze state because it is completely different. Uh, this uh, qubit is actually designed to be robust uh, against uh, errors which are shift in time and frequency. And because you have this uh, redundancy of information, uh, and for instance, uh, 
well, let us start from um, this uh, GCAP state where here you have a sum of uh, temporal wave packet with, with the width of kappa. And uh, during the propagation into optical fibers, uh, what can happen is that uh, the temporal wave packet is going to uh, spread owing to the dispersive effect. And uh, if the uh, width of the zero logical state is going to enter in the uh, bin of the one logical state, yeah, you are going to consider phase as a bit flip operation because zero will become here a one. Uh, and this is how you can read uh, the X type uh, error operation. And you can really define, uh, not here, but uh, what, what is the threshold from which you are able to correct the errors. Of course, if the temporal wave packets are too uh, widespread, you, you are not able to, to correct the errors. We can create such a GKP state thanks to an integrated photonic circuit. And it is the following. It is an algas waveguide, which is basically, not basically, but uh, a sandwich of uh, semiconductor devices um, which are, well, in a nutshell, uh, optimized to, uh, to have a very efficient uh, nonlinearity uh, conversion and also for a electrical uh, conversion, uh, electrical injection. And in addition, uh, integrated devices are quite popular right now because it is, of course, the way to, uh, to provide the scaling which is necessary for many quantum applications. So here it is only uh, the source, okay? But the idea uh, later is uh, to, uh, to have everything on chip, the source uh, operation, and then the detectors. What you have only here about Upontide uh, is that you have only the source on chip. So here you have a, another picture, you have a pump which is going to generate uh, the untangled uh, signal and either photon in the telecom uh, wavelength. So the wave functions of the photon pair can be written as, uh, as before. And uh, the energy conservation is the width along the omega plus direction and is quite thin compared to the uh, frequency width of the momentum conservation. Uh, you have uh, uh, 1000 uh, difference between the widths. Um, and so that's the state which is uh, generated by the uh, uh, waveguide, the previous, the previous waveguide is an entangled, uh, entangled photon pair. And in addition, you can see this, uh, this, uh, this peaked uh, structure. And where did it come from? Uh, as I said, the, the source here is placed into the air. Everything is not integrated on chip. Uh, and because the refractive index of the uh, semiconductor device is 3.3 and is quite hard compared to the refractive index of the air, which is one, when the photons are going to make some back and forth between uh, actually leave the, the natural um, optical cavity. And this is why you have only uh, a set of uh, modes which are allowed by the cavity. We have at least uh, five, uh, 500 peaks uh, because uh, the, phase, the width of the phase matching condition is uh, quite high, as I said. So there is two equivalent decomposition to understand the state outside the optical cavity. The first, I want to say traditional way is to understand the state as an entangled QD state. And when you have this anti-correlated correlation uh, imposed by the phase matching condition. The other way to uh, understand the state outside the optical cavity is uh, here written in this uh, quantum circuit uh, decomposition. It's more complicated, but there is a big advantage to understand the state as an entangled time frequency GKP state. So instead of understanding as entangled credit, it's going to be two entangled grid state. You have uh, the grid state coming from the signal photon, the grid set from coming from the idler photon, and that what you have here is actually uh, an entangled grid state. To uh, understand uh, the, the wave function as I have picture, uh, which is here, okay, 
is very interesting for time error correction because what you once you have faced a competition and you are going to perform a time measurement of uh, one of the qubits, what you can uh, realize is that you can correct the temporal distribution of the over because uh, while well, you have a particular entanglement between the qubits. And the idea of error correction is always the same thing. Uh, you have one qubit which carries the information that you want, another which is going to be sacrificed if you want to correct the over. What we have also shown in this uh, paper uh, is that we can also uh, perform some simple uh, manipulation, simple, single qubit gates, and uh, uh, obtain the signature of the uh, manipulation with argumental interferometry. I can discuss uh, in more detail if you want after. In the last part, I'm going to provide another type of application of uh, the engineering of the phase matching function of the photon pairs. The main idea is how we can simulate the quantum particle statistics by tuning the initial entanglement of a, of a boson pair. We are going to start by uh, a, a pair of quantum particles, which can be um, fermions and anions. If you don't know what is anion, uh, I'm going to, to talk about this later but they obey to different statistics. The operators, when you have an exchange of frequency, they have a different peer view. The quantum particles uh, are going to cross some unitary operation, and then uh, you proceed to some measurement as direct detection or coincidence. What we have experimentally is a photon pair. So it is this situation. So we are starting from a boson pair. It's going to cross some unitary operation like a bin splitter operation, and then you are going to perform some measurement, DR detection or coincidence. What you want is to have exactly the same measurement statistics that you have starting from quantum particle than the ones that you have starting from boson pairs. So the idea is to shape the initial entanglement of the, of the boson pair to exactly obtain the same detection measurement in the two cases. This idea was first proposed in 2012, and then you have some uh, pu publications that uh, propose uh, an alternative way to, to do uh, this idea. And uh, well, I'm going to, to explain uh, our paper published in 2020. What is, well, what are the uh, different uh, quantum particles? They are described by different uh, commutation operations or non-commutation relation. So boson uh, obey to this kind of uh, bosonic commutation relation. Fermions, uh, instead of having um, brackets, you have a Poisson bracket. And for non-abelian anion, you have this type of uh, uh, commutation relation. And when phi is equal to zero, you obtain um, the, uh, the fermion case and what, well, the boson case and when phi is equal to you obtain the fermions case, okay? So you have a smooth transition between the two statistics when phi here is going to zero to pi. The main idea uh, is, okay, you are going to have a wave function of a particle pair, okay? And this wave function can be decomposed into a function part and operator's part. The operator parts can obey every of these relations. The function is uh, symmetric, anti-symmetric uh, with respect to the exchange of two particles. The point is uh, you are going to simulate the statistics of fermions, which obey to this statistics with a symmetric spectrum. Okay, so symmetric, anti-symmetric, and you are going to stimulate the statistics with uh, your symmetric and anti-symmetric function. Okay. So you have, uh, you exchange, if you want, the role of the function and the role of the uh, uh, operators. The bosonic case I, I have discussed uh, in, previously. Uh, and here, what I want to say is that you how we can understand this case. Uh, this case is typical, typical from the fermionic case. So 
uh, in the fermioni case, what you have owing to the statistics is that uh, at tau is equal to zero when the fermions are uh, fully indistinguishable, then you have a complete repulsion. The fermions don't want to be with each other. They are going to measure only single counts. And you can simulate this case uh, obtained by the augmentary experiment, uh, which, which is uh, useful to obtain a signature, if you want, of the uh, symmetry of the anti-symmetry of the wave function that you have here. So you can obtain this case by using uh, bosons, but with an anti-symmetric spectrum, OK? Uh, I'm going to just to, to give a few words about the optical integrated platform, which allow to produce uh, such uh, fermions. Uh, so it's, again, an Algas waveguide, uh, but this time the pumping is orthogonal. Um, and then you have the signal in the nuclear photon, which are counter propagating owing to some uh, phase matching condition. But what it is very important is that you can directly uh, modify the joint spectral intensity or the phase matching condition of the photon pair just by shaping the uh, pump profile of a classical field. Okay. So the profile of the phase matching condition to have exactly the fermionic case look like this. And uh, you must have this sine function. So the sine function is like this. But as you can see, it's quite sharp to uh, really be able to engineer such phase matching function. What you can do instead, instead of having this sine function, but uh, to retain the anti-symmetric property under the exchange of C signal and the of photons, is instead of the sine function, you can just use omega minus t function. The phase matching function will look like the blue curve, OK? And when you are performing the coincidence with the Angumandel uh, experiment, you obtain uh, the complete repulsion property that uh, the bunching event are going to, to, to cancel. But uh, since you do not use the sine function, uh, which is uh, necessary to really reproduce the algebra of operators, but you are using this omega minus uh, function when you have some artifacts, okay? You have these two shoulders, which coming from this. So this phase, to finish this phase matching function, if, if I was not clear in the previous slide, uh, you can directly shape uh, the spatial profile of the pump to obtain such a phase matching function of the photon pair. And you can do this thanks to special light modulator. To produce such a fermion, so uh, you can change the phase uh, between two different locations, uh, zero and theta. Uh, and uh, when you the phase is pi, you can directly engineer. So here in blue, uh, engineer the phase matching, which is required to simulate fermion statistics. And then you have a good agreement with uh, theoretical uh, and uh, experimental uh, calcula uh, calculation, respectively, and measurement, uh, you can see that in the bosonic case, where you don't put any phase and where the, uh, the, uh, symmetry, the, the spectrum is symmetric, you obtain indeed the, uh, the famous deep of the Angumandel experiment. But as soon as you are going to change the phase motion and to have an anti-symmetric one, you are going to see uh, this, um, this anti-dip. And here you have the complete repulsion of the bosons, OK? Uh, because you have engineered this uh, anti-symmetric uh, phase function. And then, as I said, you have also these shoulders. Very rapidly, because I don't have many times, uh, what are these anions? Anions are quasi-particles which emerge from family system in interaction. For instance, the two-dimensional quantum all effects, and they are very particular statistics arising from 1D or 2D. And the first experimental implementation, uh, in my knowledge, which really proves the existence of such particle, was done in very recently in 2020. In the following, I'm going not to discuss two-dimensional statistics, but one-dimensional statistics, but because I have only the frequency as degree of freedom to, to be able to manipulate. And I'm going to discuss abelian anions. Uh, 
Okay, so this is the case that I have presented before. Uh, and while the idea is, uh, is the same thing, is exactly the same thing, uh, you can engineer the, you can simulate the statistics of uh, anions, a non abelian one here, by uh, choosing uh, a phase matching function of the photon pair, which is here written. And here, omega minus is uh, with the power alpha, and the fact that you have this power alpha is um, exactly the phase five that you have here. What it is very interesting to, to note is that while the theoretical coincidence of the Angmonel experiment of the anionic case, but when alpha is equal to uh, 0.5 is looking like this. And uh, interesting enough is that when tau is set to zero, you have distinguishable photons uh, owing to this structure of the uh, phase matching function. And then you have a tendency if you want of uh, bunching and here a tendency of uh, coincidence and it was uh, verified experimentally. In conclusion, I have given the main tool for uh, for the essence of quantum nets of time frequency variable single photons and how we can encode the qubits into the continuous variable single photon. And in the last part, I have discussed how we can simulate the statistic of quantum particles with boson, which is one way uh, to uh, find a useful application of a photon pairs without needing uh, the full uh, n-photon scaling, which is uh, required for quantum application. So what it is uh, actually in preparation, it's this uh, anionization uh, study, uh, which is done uh, collaboratively with my former group. And I also working on uh, how we can perform time frequency uh, metrology with a two photon state. And the idea is, uh, well, to use that, the fact that you can have a uh, low intensity uh, field to uh, measure some time and frequency parameters. And uh, in particular, we can show that we can have a, a resolution of temporal parameters below the auto second resolution, thanks to, uh, well, with the work that it is in, in preparation. So with that, I would like to thank my, my former team, um, uh, which is based in that uh, Paris University, which, which is a former, for, formerly it was Paris Diderot, but it's quite complicated, the <laughs> university system in France. It changed name uh, very often uh, and it is based here. Thank you very much for your attention.